Hey, what up fellas? So this whole day, we're gonna be fishing using this one knife. And I think it's actually a pretty special knife right here. I've been eyeing this puppy for a couple years, but I didn't really think I needed it. But now, I think I, I may need it. This is the Spyderco Aquasol, and I think it has some super unique features that are gonna be really good for fishing and survival fishing. So the plan is we're gonna be heading out to the jetties and doing a little bit of fishing using this knife right here. There's the thickest ball of bait right here. Thick, holy, oh my, it's mullet. Oh my God, they're, this is a, the tightest pack of mullet I've ever seen at the jetties, 100%. Look at that, dude, that's insane. That's the tightest pack I've ever seen. The problem is, I don't think anything's chasing them. That's the tightest pack of mullet I've seen in my life at the jetties. Asterisk, asterisk. Oh, there, there's a big trout. Dude, there's a huge trout inside of them. I'm, I think I'm throwing the wrong freaking lure, boys. Holy shit, a red just jumped out of the whole water. Holy, dude, why did I, I had to leave right then. What the, f oh my God, I've never seen it, dude. Look at this, holy, there's so many reds. Oh my God, dude, I left right when they started just going crazy. Oh my God. Let's go! Oh, this is sick! This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. There's, oh my god, dude! If we don't get one right here, right, right in. I'm right. In. I'm out of energy. Come on! <laughs> no, Coop! What are you doing, bud? Did you guys, see, you guys see those reds? Do they? Oh yeah, you told me. I think that was insane. I didn't catch one though. What a cast. Oh man, there's the lady. Jump. Oh, is it a trout? It's fine. It's a trout. Let's go. Oh, that's a nice trout. Get in here, bud. That's what I needed. I was trying to let him shake it, but it's a nice trout. Flip him. Get up there. Dude, that's a really nice one. I would never flip a trout on the rocks like that, but we keep in that boy. Dude, we came in here super shallow. Just because out, out a little bit further, there's a tons, tons of ladyfish. I thought that's what this guy was going to be. But we got a nice speckler right there. I can't grab him. He's too slimy. Look at that. Right at the top of the mouth. Down south in one of my favorite colors. <laughs> I talk about a lot is the bone color. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. Woo. All right. First. First, first keeper fish of the day right there, we got the nice little speckled trout. And right now we got our first test for the knife. Check it out, we got our stringer here. Some Somewhere along the line, I, I got the little buoy thing cut off. Maybe I had a kingfish on here or something because it's just cut straight off. Let's see if the knife can cut through this tiny little rope. Nope. Okay, took a couple tries, we got through it. And then now to complete our stringer, we're just gonna tie a uh, surgeon's loop. All you need to do is just double over the line like that, and then you just tie a simple knot. Whoosh, whoosh. Around once, and around twice. Ugh. Could have just done it around once, it's a thicker rope. Now all we need to do is go through the trout's lip, and then put the stringer through that loop, and he's on there. This is the main thing I wanted to catch today is some nice speckled trout. And that was a pretty nice one. Probably 18, maybe 19. <laughs> you guys got a good look at it, right? Because we're going to measure it and you guys got to guess. You know the drill. Let's see if we can rip another one right out of the same spot. That, he just hit it like right on the very first fall. And look, we got a lot of mull in here. We got some current flowing through. Got everything we need. There he is. That's a trout. That's a red. 
It's not a lady though. Tiny red. What up, fella? You got them spots, don't you, fella? Dang, you're gonna be one of those bull reds in a few years, fella. Only about 15 more. As long as you don't get caught over and over and over. You gotta be smarter than that. All right, I got the play. I like I like the bone color down south lure, but if we really wanna know what's out there, we got the clear DOA. It'll catch everything, just watch. All right, come on, DOA. P prove me right. First cast, backlash. So I like to start my day. Might already have a fish on. Oh, yeah. I told you, boys. I might already have a fish on getting that backlash out. Oh, baby, it's another nice trout. Get, let's go, dude. I don't believe it. Oh my God, that's such a nice trout. He's got a hurt tail. My God, dude. I've been fishing in shore trying to catch a trout like this. And again, woo. And again, if you're not gonna be keeping the fish, do not swing them up on the rocks like that. <laughs> Best thing is not even let them touch the rocks. But you know what? He's going on the stringer real quick. Dude, <laughs> did I call it with the DOA? I said we might even have a fish on just getting my backlash out. Let's go, dude. I thought we missed, I thought we missed our shot today after that huge redfish explosion. But we out here now. I love it. Dude, <laughs> the DOA boys. A long time, man, a long time. I threw this guy quite a bit, actually when I was a noob. And I didn't catch too much, so I thought DOA was overrated. But I'll tell you one thing, fish this clear puppy at the jetties, and it's just absolutely killer. All right, we're switching up to the Redfish Special. We got the DOA on a jig head. It's gonna be a little bit better to keep it near the bottom. And that's where those guys are. Plus, it's gonna cast way better since we're casting into the wind. We can just work it all the way down the creek. All the way down the creek. We're gonna work this guy all the way down the creek and we're gonna hook up. Yep, there it is. What is it? This might be a flat boy. It might be a really nice flat boy. It is, dude. It is. That's a new regulation keeper right there. It's 15. No way, dude. The flat boy on the DOA. Right, right in the creek, right where he should be. I see if we can flip him without breaking our 20 pound line Woo! look at that guy that's what i'm talking about that's a good 17 incher he does i'm gonna let him go actually he's got a weird abscess on him but dude that's a little bit of a freaking nice flat boy look at that dude one of the coolest fish to catch at the jetties very wide looking flat boy right there so cool we got him on the doa too you can't beat that this guy does have the, like I said, he's got that weird little abscess. I'm gonna let him go, because I think we can catch more. All right, I'll let him go. Whoop. Whoo, he's out of there. DOA, killing it. All right, check out how I got this knife rigged up on my backpack. Pretty much every fixed blade like this one is gonna come with a sheath. And the great thing about this backpack, I guess this is more about the backpack, is I love having these molly loops. This guy fits perfectly in the molly loops, and you can just slide it in right there. And of course, you can also do that with folding knives like this one. And that's why I love having these molly loops. I use them for everything, even my fish, fish grips and everything. Oh, there he is. Dang it, red, dude. <laughs> Keeping in, it's a flat fish. But it's just a flying fish because I cannot land this guy. Oh, look, he's got a blue tail. You'd never expect to see that on a small red. Check out this freaking DOA shrimp. Do you think this guy got chewed up a little bit? It's just got teeth marks all over it. I'm 
telling you, I'm telling you about this DOA, man. It's the most underrated bait. Hardly anybody has heard of the DOA shrimp. It is absolutely killer though. The reason why there's so many fish here is this time of year, the mullet is running south and we just had a little glimpse, a little tiny glimpse of a little bit cooler weather, cooler weather and it caused these mullet to start moving a little bit south. And when they hit the jetties, they kind of get stuck right here, right next to the jetties. And that's when you get a lot of different fish trying to eat them. All right, let's get these fish out of here and then we're on to the real test, which is gonna be trying to flay these guys up with that Spyderco knife. Look at those guys, nice looking guys. I'm gonna cut them up. Time to fillet these fellers up. This one, 19 and a half. This guy, 19. Just about what we thought. Now, let's see how this little knife does. Will it work? Can you fillet with it? I think we can. Now, I do have super big plans for this knife right here, and I didn't tell you the main feature that makes this knife pretty unique, and that is it pretty much just doesn't rust at all. That's it, that's the main feature, it just doesn't rust. And I have another blade made from the same steel, it's a folding knife, and yeah, I've proven. It pretty much just doesn't rust. I hard, I don't even wash it off, and it still doesn't rust, even in salt water. Let's just get into them, see what happens. Okay, right away, not as sharp as a fillet knife, but. Not as thin and it also doesn't bend, which is kind of what you want in a fillet knife, but I think we'll be able to work without all the benefits of a fillet knife. It's not going to be as good, but it should be able to get the job done. Actually, not bad, dude. It's a little bit, little bit rough, but I mean, that's to be expected. And we did get most of this meat off. Pretty easy. It wasn't even too hard. I do love flaying some speckled trout because they're just super easy to flay. And you know what? There's a little bit of meat left on there, a little film of meat we, we would have got with a proper fillet knife, but man, we got, we got it pretty good. All right, so this knife did end up cutting the fish. And you know what? It didn't do too bad of a job considering that it is, you know, not a fillet knife. Like I said, the number one feature of this knife is it's a fixed blade knife and it has the H1 steel, which just does not rust. Now for every pro, there has to be a con, and to make this knife pretty, pretty much rust proof, it has to be using a little bit softer steel. That means the edge retention is not gonna be as good. It does lose its edge faster than a high carbon steel would. Now let me tell you, if you never owned a knife, if you never used a knife a lot, you wouldn't know that a knife does, it doesn't matter what kind of knife it is, doesn't matter how expensive, eventually, if you use it a lot, it will need to be sharpened. So that's why I got my knife sharpener right here. It's actually also a Spyderco, just the Spyderco Triangle Sharpener. It works pretty good, pretty easy to use. But yeah, if you're buying a nice knife, you definitely want to get a sharpener as well, even if it's not a knife, nice knife. You can use cheap knives, you can use a sharpen on them, and you can still get them pretty damn sharp. This knife is about 130 bucks, and there's other options, super cheap options. You can get a Mora knife, which is only about 20 bucks, has stainless steel, is pretty resistant to rusting. So if you're just looking for a knife that's pretty good to use for fishing, you can check out some other stainless steel knives, some other low carbon steel, and you can get them for pretty cheap. But I do think if you're gonna be surviving around salt water, this would not be a bad survival knife. You just need to make sure that you have something to sharpen it with. Now, one other thing that I've been thinking of is I also have this knife. And I'll tell you right now, this is my favorite knife of all time. Also has that uh, rust resistant H1 steel. This is also a Spyderco knife, and it's just the folder pretty much very similar to this knife right here. Just a fixed blade and a folding knife. And for me, the ability to have it fold away is super nice, especially since I'm fishing the jetties a lot. Uh, you can't just throw this knife around on the jetties or else you're gonna mess up the edge a lot. It's nice to have this where you can just fold it in and it's nice and safe. The edge is protected. But that's it. I love you guys very much. We'll do this one more time. We'll see you guys next time.